Hello and welcome to a short tutorial from Western Principles which will show you how to get critical information out of Microsoft Project for the Web using Power BI. Visibility to progress and resources is the number one ask from executives. Power BI fulfills the need and will help you be more successful with project deliveries and outcomes. This is part six of this free Microsoft Project for the Web course. Please see the description for this video for other related how-to training for Project for the Web. In this training, we're going to cover the how-to of getting, running, and responding to Power BI reports for Microsoft Project for the Web. To get the most benefit from this course, get ready to open up Microsoft Project for the Web and Power BI and follow along. Pause this video frequently to give yourself time to look at the dashboards in Power BI. Power BI is Microsoft's business analytical engine. It's widely used across the Microsoft platform, including Dynamics 365, the Microsoft Dataverse, Microsoft Project Online, and Microsoft Project for the Web. Many third parties, like UMT360, also offer their own reporting packages using Power BI as the foundation. Power BI provides powerful interactive visualizations, including the regular set of charting and table options like pie charts and donut charts, and some unique capabilities like maps, radar charts, spiderweb diagrams, and tree maps. These are all described on Microsoft's site. Power BI also allows you to pull information from many sources, some natively like Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Project for the Web, and some with adapters, such as for Salesforce and SAP's HANA. You can find these adapters on Microsoft's App Source for Power BI. The Power BI user interface has been designed to be easy to use so that end users can easily and quickly create their own reports. Power BI is based in Microsoft's secure Azure cloud, as such, Power BI takes advantage of the security, scalability, accessibility, and survivability of Microsoft's cloud. Power BI is part of the Power Platform, which includes Power BI, Power Automate for workflow automation, and Power Apps for creating applications. These are all low-code or no-code solutions that make extending and developing your environment's capabilities easier than ever. With the Power Platform, you can extend the out-of-the-box Power BI reports or create new ones. You can also extend the capabilities in Microsoft Project for the web, for example, by creating integrated applications with customized forms and workflows that work tightly with Project for the web. This is something we'll talk about in the next tutorial. Additionally, if you need help using the Power Platform, reach out to us at Western Principles. Finally, if you still want to know more about Power BI as a business analytical solution and how it ranks against other similar industry tools, you might be interested in knowing that in February of 2019, Gartner.com, a software reviewing company, confirmed Microsoft as a leader in this space in the 2019 Gartner Magic Quadrant for Analytics and Business Intelligence platform. So what Power BI solution is available for Microsoft Project for the Web? Microsoft has released a starter kit for Power BI dashboards for Project for the Web and Project Online. To use and expand these dashboards, you'll need a Project Plan 3 or Plan 5 license and licensing for everyone who will be consuming the reports. You'll also need Power BI professional licenses for everyone who runs, modifies, or consumes these reports in an interactive format. You can, however, publish reports to PDF, PowerPoint, or other formats and distribute those without the need for additional licensing. Do check out the licensing information for Power BI and Project as the licensing restrictions change from time to time. You can get Power BI licenses in several ways. Power BI professional licenses, which are the right choice for small organizations, and premium licenses for organizations needing 500 or more users. Some Office 365 licensing with the core Office suite of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook also includes Power BI. This training is focused on the report end users. These may include executives, the PMO, project managers, and even project teams. To get the Power BI dashboards installed and running, visit your system administrator and be sure to bring them some carrot cake, donuts, or coffee. Then ask nicely if they can please set you up with the Power BI reports for your Microsoft Project for the Web environment. Finally, set them up with the URL for the instructions and download the Power BI templates for your Microsoft Project for the Web reports. This is in the description for this video. You may have a more formal process for getting the Power BI templates set up, but carrot cake and coffee will still help you to get it done. I'm sure of it. Running the Power BI dashboards couldn't be easier. Your system administrator will point you to where you can find your Power BI dashboards for Project for the Web. Again, cake and coffee will smooth this process. With your reporting URL in hand, you can run your Power BI reports from the desktop app, your browser, or the Power BI mobile app. Let's look at the Power BI environment. Let's go and get into the Power BI dashboards. 
If you have access to your Power BI reports for Microsoft Project with the Web, go ahead in there now in your browser. We'll be in there in a minute, but we're going to stick around in some slide where we'll be get you acquainted with moving around in Power BI. Let's talk about some of the navigation in a Power BI report as a starter. Down the left-hand side, you see the navigation among the various dashboards. Across the top navigation, you see the file menu with options including saving a copy or exporting the PBIX file so that you can modify a copy of the report. From here, you can also print the report. Under the second menu, you'll see the option for exporting to Excel, PowerPoint, or a PDF. The export to PowerPoint is a great way to start the preparation of an executive report on your portfolio, resources, and projects. The Get Insights menu is interesting as it pops up some automatically generated insights into your dashboard. These might help you dig into your data by highlighting exceptions. You can also subscribe to the report, and this will email you updates on a regular basis. This includes both a copy of the report and a click through to the report. This is great for people who want the report sent to them versus pulling them directly from Power BI. Most Power BI reports provide filters and slicers. The filters typically show up at the top. You can use these to quickly zero in on the data you want. Additional filters and slicers can be added for you based on your configuration. For example, you might want to add metadata to each project such as the project sponsor or customer name. Additionally, if you use the Microsoft Project Accelerator, you might add filters to these reports that would include programs, project score, priority, and others. You can also usually filter the report by clicking on report items. For example, in this report, if we click on the open projects in the donut report on the left, your report will filter on the open projects. You'll notice that the things that are filtered out go lighter, kind of washed out colors. To turn the filter off, click on the open part of the donut again, and the filter is reset. You can also click on the reset to default to remove filters. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. All right, let's jump into Power BI now and look at eight of the out of the box project for the web dashboards. If you follow along in your environment and it's been set up properly and you've been using project for the web, then you'll have data in your reports automatically. If you don't have data in your reports, just follow along with us on this tour of the dashboards. Let's start with the Portfolio Dashboard. Here we are inside our Portfolio Dashboard inside our browser. Let's start by looking for projects that haven't started. All we do is we click on the Not Started side of our donut, and now we've filtered all the projects for things that haven't started. The question we would ask here is, why haven't these projects started? They're late, some of them here. Why haven't they started, and what can we do about that? Let's now filter for projects that are in progress and late. So we click on in progress and that filters the list at the bottom here for projects that are just in progress. And maybe we sort by overdue tasks. Now we can look at this and look at which are the projects that we really need to focus on to help our project managers get their projects back on track. We might also want to look at different project managers and how much work we've assigned them. So for example, this little yellow slice here We've got one person that has one project. Is that enough? Maybe we should be assigning more work to them. Similarly, we can look over here at this project manager where we've got 39 projects assigned to them. What's happening there? Have we got too many projects assigned to this one person? If we want to get directly to one of those projects to see what's happening in it, we just simply click on the link that's shown here and this will take us directly down into Project for the Web and open the project that we're looking at. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Now let's look at the portfolio timeline. Here we are inside the portfolio timeline Power BI dashboard. And this gives us a really good picture of all of the projects that we've got and how they might relate together. You might want to add some metadata to your projects to indicate which program they belong to so that you could filter this project report by programs. What sort of things can you look at in here? Well, one, if you looked at this by program, you'd see perhaps how these projects are all interacting together inside a program. Another thing you might want to do is click on the project manager and filter for all of the projects that belong to that project manager. Finally, you might want to be able to look down this column here and look at which projects are running late. And with that information in hand, you could go figure out how can you help the project manager to get these projects back on track. 
In each of these projects, as you hover over the bar, you'll be able to see the percent complete on the project as well as related dates. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. We won't be looking at the roadmap reports in this training. Let's take a look at one of the most important dashboards, the resource dashboard. Here we are inside the resource dashboard. The sort of things you might want to look for in here might be first of all to start with who has a lot of work assigned. So for example, this resource has a lot of activities assigned to them. And if we click on this resource, we'll filter out this report just by those activities and just by the projects that this person is working on. We might also want to look at which activities are overdue. So if I click on overdue down here, I now filter out projects that have overdue activities. Now this is my demo data and everything is overdue. I may also want to see what's happening on individual projects. In this diagram down at the bottom, I can see how many resources are assigned on each project. And if I click on any of the projects, I filter the report for just that project. So now I can see the four resources, how much work they've done, how much is remaining, how many activities are complete and how many are overdue. And with that information in hand, I might want to look at how can I move this project along better? For example, can I reassign some work? You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Alongside the resource dashboard, you'll want to use the resource assignments dashboard. Here we are in the resource assignments dashboard in Power BI. One thing you might want to look for in here is how much work has been assigned to each resource and what is it. So if we click on this one resource, we can see all of the assignments that this person has on all of the different projects. What we might look for here is, have we got too much work assigned to one person? Is that too much risk? And should we spread it around by reassigning some work? A word of caution here. The assigned hours that show up in these reports as effort may not be accurate. If you remember from parts two and four of this training, when you assign a task to a person in Microsoft Project for the web, the scheduling engine assumes the person is 100% assigned to the duration of that task. So if a person is assigned for a week of work, Microsoft Project for the web assumes that is 40 hours. If you really meant that they were only going to work two hours a day on a task throughout the week, that would be 10 hours. You'd have to go into the effort fields in Project for the web and individually update that. In a moment, we'll look at the My Timeline dashboard, which can give you a better look at a resource having too many tasks assigned at a time, which might be a better indicator of overallocation. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. With the task overview, you can dig into what people are doing. As we get into the task overview here, what you might want to look for is tasks that are overdue. When we filter on the overdue tasks, we can see this list at the bottom here is showing us all of the overdue tasks. What you might want to look for here is questions around what progress has been made and what can you do to help move these tasks forward. You might also want to filter by project managers here. And this will help you understand, does a specific project manager have a lot of tasks that are overdue? And again, help you get to the answer of what can you do to help move this work forward? You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Let's take a look at a project timeline. All right, moving from the task overview over to our project timeline. And here we are in our project timeline report. This report allows you to filter by multiple ways. So task status, project manager, and you can see we're already filtered on a project manager and all of that project manager's projects and project name. Let's look at some of the details in this report. If we hover over any of the tasks, we get a little bit of information about the task. So we know that this task is completed and we can see the dates for it. If I hover over this one down here, for example, I can see that it's 50% complete and because it's shaded in red, I know that it's overdue. When I've got an overdue task, I might want to ask the question, how do I move it forward? Additionally, I could use the task status filter just to look for things that are overdue. And I would use this to help me figure out what's overdue and what can I do to move those tasks forward.
Finally, I might want to look at a series of projects and how those are related together. For example, maybe as some sort of a program. So I can select multiple projects here and I wouldn't see relationships among the activities, but I would see the different activities on this schedule and how they fit together. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Here's a quick way to take a look at assigned work. Let's jump to the My Work dashboard. What you might want to look for here is to filter by an individual resource to see what work is assigned. As I filter on a resource, I might find that I've got too much or too little work assigned to an individual. And with that information in hand, I can go and reassign work to make sure that we balance the loads. Once again, don't be fooled by the effort fields. This is really relying on how you do your scheduling in Project for the Web. You'll see over allocation reflected more in the timeline view. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. Use my timeline to have a look at what work is assigned to who and when. Let's go over to the timeline. Here we've got a timeline and it's filtered by resources. Let's look at this individual resource and future and overdue tasks. And what we're looking for here is the case where we've got too many tasks assigned at one point in time. So if I look between November 3rd and 10th, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tasks assigned to this individual between November 3rd and 10th. And regardless of how much effort is actually captured in each of these activities, we know the effort from Project for the Web may not be accurate. So what we're really looking for now is, can we find places where we've got too much work assigned to an individual, and at that point we need to balance the work by shifting work around. Similarly, we might find windows, like perhaps between November 24th and December 1st here, where we have no work assigned to this individual. And in this case, what we need to do is go and see if we can reassign work, either maybe pushing some of this assigned work around or looking for other work that we could assign this individual in that time. You can pause the video here and try that in Power BI now. Click play again when you're ready to move on to the next step. If you want to modify the out-of-the-box Power BI reports, create new Power BI dashboards or integrate these Power BI reports with information from other systems, then you can either do that yourself with some basic training in Power BI or call on Western Principles to help you extend your reports. If you want to learn how to use Power BI, Microsoft provides free training from their website. Western Principles can also provide supplementary training specific to Microsoft Project for the Web and Microsoft Project Online dashboards. Thanks for watching this video and congratulations, you've finished the Power BI tutorial. Please join us for other detailed tutorials about Microsoft Project for the Web to drive successful project outcomes.